Welcome to the quick dungeon guide for Cinderbrew Meadery. And quick note, this The Wall Within dungeon is not available for Mythic Zero or Mythic Plus for the Wall Within expansion launch. However, you will do them at the start of the expansion to gear up your character for Season 1. This dungeon will then very likely be part of Season 2 Mythic Plus or The Wall Within. And I'll make the usual in-depth masterclass guide down the road for Mythic Plus. This guide is just meant to be a quick and dirty approach for you to farm gear quickly. It's recorded off the beta. If there's any big changes, I'll leave the notes in the pinned comments. So you zone in, and I think this will be a fan favorite because you can do a giga massive pull right at the start. Lots of mobs. Um, and I'll kind of talk about the more dangerous abilities. I won't talk about everything. Pyromaniacs will put Erupting Inferno on people. Avoid the person with the debuff. There's a red swirly to understand inside. The patrons will do mean mark. It targets the tank. Make sure you have some form of physical mitigation going and you should be A-OK. -okay. Pyromaniacs are the casters that you want to interrupt. They do boiling flames. Make sure you interrupt these pyromaniacs. And that's pretty much all the mobs do. You can basically pull the entire room, well, almost the entire room if you have a good group. The last thing I'll add is they do Cinderbrew Toss and this is basically, again, targeted at the tank. You should be A-OK. -okay. By the way, before you pull the boss, there's also this mini boss person called Chewy. Uh, he doesn't really do much. He basically seasons everyone with salt. It puts a debuff on everyone and... Uh, it's a stacking debuff, it tick down over time, it's just kind of a hilarious mechanic to be honest. Uh, he also does high sticks. Whoever is designing this dungeon is really good with puns. Uh, this ability basically launches uh, swirlies in the air, you just dodge swirlies, as simple as that. But more importantly, you will pull the first boss, Eldria, and Eldria is um, a boss that is basically a bartender. He does Keck Smash. This is a tank buster, and you just need to make sure you have mitigation. It also knocks you back. He also does Throw Cinder Brew. This is really a healer mechanic. It will basically put a dot on people, like you can see on the Hunter and the Evoker, and the healer just needs to spot heal them. Uh, the boss will also do Blazing Belch. This is a frontal. You just need to sidestep the frontal. So by the way, if you pull Chewy with the boss like me, you just have multiple dots that you need to spot heal. Um, so more work for the healer over there. Eventually, the boss will face. You'll run to the intermission. You'll run to the basically the bar counter, and you will do happy hour and this is when he'll start serving beers on the table you can see over here and your job is supposed to basically bring the beers to the patrons doing damage to the boss at this point is not possible you can pick up the beer by clicking on this icon over here you can see caring cinder brew and the idea is basically you run onto the tables you serve these thirsty patrons their beer they will drink the beer as you can see over here and then they'll be happy there's also some uh, patrons at the far corner so make sure you get the ones at the far corner as well and after you serve everyone beer uh, the boss will basically resume the fight the boss will then rinse and repeat its ability it's really simple from here on just kill the boss and we'll head south into this new door that it opens you get brand new mobs here you get wranglers you get bees the Wrangler's Archer mob, it does shoot on um, its targets, just heal through that. The bees will do Shredding Sting, and this basically puts a debuff on you. Essentially, you just need to heal through that debuff. The Harvester will do Beeswax, and this is a channel AoE ability. Move out of the Swirly, if not, you'll get hit by the AoE that just happened on screen. You have more mobs coming in here. The Beast will attempt to do Final Sting. Point is, it will put a dot on people with Final Sting, and after that, you'll kind of die like most people you know, bees in nature do. The more important thing to interrupt in this entire area is the purveyor's honey volley. Um, I will mark it as a caster in my plater profile that like you can see on screen. So if you download my plater profile, it's kind of easy to know what to interrupt. You can see there's a lot of dot on people. So your healer just needs to be alert to top people up there. You basically make your way through this entire corridor. You will face your first frontal mob over here. And this is basically the Wrangler, it does Bizuka as this frontal that you need to move out of. Point is, you just keep moving through the entire hallway filled with bees and you can kind of pull fast as you can see, like what we are doing over here. Eventually, you come into this clearing where it houses the next boss. Um, you don't need to clear everything on the platform. You can just ignore the ones in the corner here. Again, all these mobs you've seen before, by the way, FPS warning, your FPS might drop over in this area. <laughs> All right, once you clear everything in the area, you see the boss just waiting in the middle of the room for you. This is the second boss, and there's Busby. Let's kind of talk about what Busby does. By the way, I opted to do Busby as a second boss, but it seems like you can actually do the other boss, Ipa, first. It just depends on which route in the dungeon you take. It's entirely up to you. It doesn't really matter, you know, for non-Mythic Plus content. Anyway, Busby, what does it do? First ability, Snack Time. It summons barrels on the ground, avoid the swirlies, move out of them, and then you will see uh, this kind of barrels start spawning all these bees. Uh, these bees are kind of interesting. They basically put a, a bleed on people with their abilities. You can see this shredding sting. This is what puts the bleed on people. You can see it dashes out and it basically puts the debuff on people. Now, the interesting thing about this bee is that when they reach 1%, when you kill them off, they become rideable. You can actually click on them to ride on them. And you can see that is what one of 
our allies basically did over here. The evoker, it's to the corner of the screen, but you can see the evoker is actually riding on the bee. You can click on this bee that has become tameable. And once you ride the bee, you can actually launch the bee forward. You can see he's launching the bee here. And when you launch the bee forward, the bee charges 50 yards and it would basically collide with any barrels in his pathway. It would destroy the barrel. The point is you want to destroy the barrels because when you destroy the barrels, it will stop spawning ads throughout the fight. From time to time, the boss will do honey marinade. It basically puts a debuff on someone that's being targeted and essentially the person will pulse with uh, this kind of AOE damage to stay away from the person, spot heal, and you will spawn a lava pool after that. Just move out of the lava pool and you'll be fine. It does fluttering wing. This is just a simple knockback kind of thing. You just want to run against the wind. It does AOE damage and that's pretty much all the abilities rinse and repeat and the boss will essentially fall over. Once you kill the boss, you want to make your way to the other boss uh, Ipa. Again, Ipa and Busby seems to be interchangeable in terms of order, so you can do them in whatever order you want. Just depends on which path you take after the first boss. You can see I'm clearing my pathway back to uh, the first boss area. We run through this tiny doorway here, and you can see, lo and behold, we are back at the first boss area, right? And then we basically head into the next wing over here, which is on the left side. So after the first boss, essentially you can turn left or you can turn right. They basically open up to the two different wings. One houses Ipa, one houses Busby. So anyway, over here, uh, you go into uh, Ipas's area and you have uh, some mobs that you've already seen, the Pyromaniacs are casters. The testers will do free samples. This is basically just chuck a dot onto you, just heal through the dot. You can see that's the one over here. This hop goblin will do reckless delivery. You can see it basically doing this charge out. You just want to move away from it. It'll hit the wall, it'll stun itself, it'll spawn ads, pick up the ads, kill the ads. Very simple. You'll continue down this corridor, you continue to clear. And eventually you will enter this little hallway here that basically shows you the room for the next boss, Epa. Again, very similar mobs, you've already seen all of them. I'm going to skip them all. Oh, one call out here. The mobs will spawn explosive brew. You want to hard swap to this explosive brew like the name suggests. Uh, if you let it explode, basically it does damage uh, to the party, essentially. You can see explosive brew going off here. It does damage to the entire party. Anyway, tons of mob clear the entire area and then that will basically force the next boss to spawn. And the next boss is a very cleverly named boss. It's called Ipa or IPA. It does something called Spouting Stout. It basically does AoE damage to the party. Like you can see, you want to avoid the swirlies over here as well. And some of these swirlies will spawn droplets. You basically want to pick up the droplets. So the idea is that the mobs that spawn, the drops that spawn, they will move towards the boss. And if you don't kill the ants before they reach the boss, the boss will basically consume them and you'll eat them up. You can see this is what happens when uh, the boss eats the ants. I didn't know what I was doing, so I brought the ants to the boss. Uh, anyway, the boss will consume the mobs. Every time that happens, it deals party-wide damage. It also gains a massive absorb shield. So the idea is that you always want to bring the boss away from ads, which is what I learned. So I brought the boss away. It also does burning fermentation. Um, and that basically puts a dot on someone. You just spot heal that. Other than that, last ability it does is bottoms uppercut. This is a tank buster. You just need to mitigate uh, and you'll be fine. That's pretty much all the abilities. And you just rinse and repeat. The boss will eventually fall over. Once you kill Ipa and you kill both wings, meaning Ipa and Buzz B, you want to start running back into the area where you first started, where the first boss is, and you'll see all these bees start spawning. You want to ride all these bees, click on them, and it will bring you to the area for the final boss. Uh, you will land, and then you'll pull all these uh, random mobs that it's really more of an RP event. Just kill them. They don't really do much. Uh, they do downward trend. It basically uh, attempts to summon AoE, uh, and basically uh, you just move out the AoEs, you'll be fine. Kill them all. So every time one of them dies, uh, they will kind of like kill the other uh, members, and then they will evolve in terms of like what they become but long story short they don't do much just kill them final boss spawns after some rp this is goldie baron bottom so the first ability does spread the love it basically stomps on the ground it spawns all these barrels and this barrel is key for the mechanics of the boss so let's talk about it the boss firstly does cash cannon this is always targeted on the tank and the idea is that you want to point the frontal towards the barrels when the frontal attack lands on the barrels, the barrel will explode and upon explosion, it will spawn waves. You need to dodge the waves. The idea is that you want to burn as many barrels as possible and I'll explain why in a bit. But its next ability is Burning Ricochet. Same thing here, it will target non-tanks. It basically puts damage on them that they will take down and the idea is that you want to spawn the debuff on the barrels and that basically lights up the barrels. It will also cause the barrels to explode and the idea is that you want to burn as many barrels as possible because shortly after the boss will basically RP and it will do let it hail and what it does during this intermission is it will explode every single barrel. And if you didn't kill the barrels initially and it will be impossible to do the mechanic in terms of dodging and whatnot. So uh, that's why you want to, you know, destroy the barrels earlier on. 
before let it heal. And that's pretty much the entire dungeon. If you found this guide helpful, don't thank me. Thank all the Patreon subscribers and all the YouTube members of this channel. They are the MVPs that allows me to do the content on this channel. Shout out to them. If you'd like to support us, link to our Patreon is in the description. All the user interfaces, all the playter profiles that you see in this video, entirely free to download. Video instructions to install in the description. Smash the subscribe button if you'd like to see more The War Within content from me. I'll see you in the next video.